Hello guys, my name is Nate, welcome back to my channel. Uh, back in November, I did a little manga bingo challenge where I wanted to read 25 different volumes of manga in a month, and I was successful in that. Some of the volumes I had were omnibuses, so they contained three volumes, and I didn't read all of those, but I did at re least read the first volume in each of them. And I said in like, I was gonna do some kind of wrap up in maybe shorts and something like this. I never ended up doing that. And so I wanted to do kind of one definitive video, just kind of wrapping up my thoughts on that, giving a very, very brief idea of what I thought of all the 25 different volumes, but also kind of talking about if I'm going to continue them and what series is that I think I'm just not that fussed about. So yeah, let's get into it because there are 25 different things to go over. So I have separated them into categories. And so the first category are these five, which are series that I had already started. So these were the only five volumes that were continuations. Otherwise I started 20 new series, which is a lot. So yeah, let's go over it. I read volume 24 of Boys Over Flowers. This is fun, kind of messy, kind of toxic romance drama. I'm on volume 24. I'm going to continue the series. I have all of the volumes as well. So yeah, I will be continuing the series. Then I also have 24 of Haikyuu. This is sports, volleyball, fun, exciting, interesting characters, fast paced, and yeah, love it. Will obviously be continuing the series. I have all the volumes of the manga as well, and yeah, very excited about that. And then I have volume one of Full Metal Alchemist. This is in the Full Metal edition, and this was a reread for me. I've read this series before, and so yeah, I don't necessarily need to continue it, but I probably will read it at some point in my life. I really love this series and really recommend it. And then I have Hero Tales. This is volume two of a five volume series, and I did enjoy this volume. However, this is it's an action adventure series. It's interesting. It was fast paced. You know, there was good action stuff, and I did enjoy it. It's done by the same artist and author as Full Metal Alchemist, Hiromu Arakawa. However, the story is done, I think it's a Chinese story. Story. It's done by Hyang Jin Zhao. And so I don't know if it's like an adaptation of some kind of novel or something. So I don't know if she's following along a different storyline. I did overall enjoy this. However, there leads to what I think is going to be some kind of romance in this that kind of pseudo incesty. The boy, think he knows he's not his, her brother. She thinks he's her brother. He's older, so she, he was adopted when she was a baby. So she thinks he's her, he's her brother, but he doesn't. And I think he fancies her. It was kind of alluded to in that, in this. And um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. How, that's going to be gross. Let's be real. I'm not going to like that if that happens. It is only a five volume series. So I only have three more to read. So I am going to finish it. I do own them all as well. But yeah, that's like my one tidbit of this. If that happens, I'm not going to really like it, but I do have all five volumes. I did like the story with the, aside from that enough. So yeah, I will be continuing this. And then I have Chobits. This is volume two of the omnibus so volumes five through eight and as you can see I still have a bookmark in there I have read the first volume and then just a little bit over it and I probably will finish this series because I have the three volumes left to read and I own them but I'll be honest I don't particularly like this series I just think it's a bit boring I don't really like some of the romance stuff in it because it is about computers that are all quite young looking girls and men that fall in love with them a lot of the time I think it's overly sexual in an unnecessary way again because of these young looking girls that makes it a bit creepy and also just a bit boring Boring. So I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, I might I might give it another try, just kind of finish it off because I do own them. But um, I probably will be unhauling these in the future. If I read it or not, I'm going to get rid of them because I don't really want to keep them in my collection. But yeah, it was just, yeah, it's just not really particularly my interest. So that is our first category. Now our second category is a lot more. And this is basically books that I do own more of. So starting up, we have Sailor Moon Volume 1. Now I own Volume 1 and then Volumes 4 through 9 and I did enjoy this. This is a very older manga and so it's quite quick paced. It's not as much like character building at the beginning. It's kind of throwing us more into the story and so like you meet three of the Sailor Guardians in this three. No, you meet four of them in this and I thought that was just quite quick. Like it's not a very big volume and we've already, our main character's got her powers and then she's met three other people of the Guardians who've also got their powers. So it did feel quite quick. Um, I am going to buy I think Volumes 2 and 3 and so I can continue the series. But yeah, it just felt quite fast paced, but I enjoyed it nevertheless. It was just quite light and obviously it was quite nostalgic as well. So it was quite nice to read. And next up we have Captive Hearts Volume 1. This is a five volume romance series. It's basically about this guy. His family are in some way indebted to her family. So he kind of has to do what she says. So he ends up coming back and they meet for the first time and then he ends up falling in love with her. But it's not because he's has to. It's kind of like because he wants to. It was fine. I do have the five volumes. I'm going to at least read the next one to see how I think about, feel about it. But it was just average. Like there are better shoujos, there are better romances out there. So yeah, if I didn't have the volumes, I probably wouldn't bother. But because I do have the rest of the series, I will at least read the next one to see how I feel about it. Then we have Whistle Volume 1. This, I have four volumes of this series and I really enjoyed it. This is a football series. It's old school, like I think late 90s, early 2000s, as you might be able to see from the art style. It's quite an old art style. And I quite like that. I quite like that it has this very like vintage 
manga feel about it. And so yeah, I'm going to read the four volumes I have. I have no idea what I'm going to do after that because I imagine they're going to be quite out of print so they might be harder to find. I'll come to that when I get to it but yeah I will at least read the four volumes that I had for this. Like I said it was fun, it was easy, I really like sports series so yeah. Then I have Dogs. This is volume one which is technically the prelude. I don't 100% know if this was written before the series or after. Sometimes you know prequels are written after but this kind of is the summary of four main characters and how they get to a point that I'm guessing is then going to be the start of the series where they work together. I have one volume of this which I am going to at least read that one volume. This was fine. It had like I said four different kind of stories and they were interesting enough the characters in them seemed interesting enough the art style in it was quite nice and yeah like i said i've got another volume it was so easy to read there was a lot of action in it so we'll see if the first volume holds my interest enough for me then to want to continue the series i do think i'm probably not going to be both that bothered about owning them so if i continue it i might be buying them digitally then we have yotsuba volume one i have three volumes of this series i've already read volume two because i absolutely loved it this is a light-hearted fun series about a minga this young girl who goes to a new town and basically her everyday adventures. It is kind of a slice of life, very fun, very lighthearted, quite funny. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I will be continuing on this series. I'll read all three volumes I have. If I can find the volumes, I will. I think they're quite out of print. So I potentially will just buy the eBooks for them. And I'm not necessarily that bothered if I can only get the eBooks for them because although it's like a fun series, it's not one of those series I'm like, I really want to own because I love it. I'm quite happy to just have it on my Kindle. And next up was Hanakimi. This is another one of the omnibuses. And I have only actually read the first one of this still. Now this series, I knew the story because I've watched the ages ages ago I've watched the Japanese drama and the Japanese drama was hilarious and fun just really good this was really really fast paced to the point that if I had not watched the Japanese drama I don't 100% know if I would have understood what was going on because it just throws you in things happen so quickly and yeah it's a lot it's about this main girl who disguises herself as a boy to go to this all boys school because she really likes this guy which I think when I was younger, I did not think, realise it's kind of creepy. And she ends up being his roommate. And she's quite in love, like she's in love with him. And she kind of forces herself, not forces herself on him in like a sexual way, but like follows him around, interacts with him a lot and kind of pushes him. And I know they end up in a, like on a romance. And so now I'm kind of like, I don't know if I like that because it's a bit weird that she, because she also lived in America. So she flew to Japan to join this all boys school just to get close to this guy because he's quit high jump and she kind of wants to encourage him to get back into high jump because he was like this mm, country level athlete. There's three volumes in the series as this book is total. So I am actually going to finish the whole book and then see how I like it at the end of that. The first volume did also have a one shot at the end, which was quite common. I don't think, I don't know if it's as common nowadays for romance manga to have, but it was quite common for romance to have like when there was written like 15 years ago, 20 years ago. That was a bad story. It was kind of, again, pseudo incesty, And actually, or was it actual? Because I think they were cousins. Yeah, and the guy was really manipulative to the girl in it. And it was supposed to, I think, be displayed as cute. And oh, he really cares about only you. And no, he was a dick. So I don't like the back of this, that story. So we'll see how the rest of this volume goes. And then I'll make my mind up. But I will at least read this volume. And then I have The Grey Man, volume one. I have two volumes of this. And I will be reading the second volume. And after that, I'm not sure. I mean, I think I will probably want to continue on with the series. But I'm not sure in which format. I am potentially going to try reading it on Shonen Jump. And then after I'm, you know, more into the series there, I'll then make up my mind about whether I feel like I want to own the volumes or not. That's the way I think I'm going to go about a lot of series because I think I want to try and have my manga collection be ones that I absolutely love and like want to read again and want to dip my toes into or just ones that I'm just really like my, my read of that I just want to own. Um, so I will keep probably the two volumes of this that I own and see once I've read a bit more on Shonen Jump how I feel about it. But yeah, I probably will be continuing with the series past volume two on the Shonen Jump app. Uh, the Shonen Jump app, for anyone who doesn't know, is a app that the publisher is Shonen Jump and you can read, I think it's like a hundred chapters a day. There is about six chapters in an average volume of manga. Yeah, and I think it's like three pounds. I haven't actually signed up to it yet. So all of that could be wrong, but that's what I think it is from what I've looked. So I haven't got it yet and I'm going to wait until I finish with my uni assessments for the month. Um, but then I will be getting it and trying to use it every month and reading at least like 10 chapters a day a month to just make it worthwhile. But yeah, it seems like it's a good deal. So I can read a lot of the popular manga series on it. Uh, a lot of manga series, is, especially ones like that are aimed at boys, the Shonen, are from Shonen Jump. Not all of them, but they're good enough that it's really worth the money on it. And then I have Tokyo Ghoul. I read volume one. I think I have six or seven volumes of this and I will be continuing with them. I really enjoyed this volume. I didn't love the human eating aspect in it. It's about ghouls that live in this city and eat humans and our main character gets attacked by one. But it was really interesting. I liked the art style in it. I thought the story was interesting and something that I hadn't really seen before. So I'm interested to see where it goes. And yeah, like I said, I have six or seven volumes. I'll be reading them. After that, I'm not sure. I think this is a 14 volume total series. So it wouldn't be like there's tons more to collect afterwards. But also, um, I don't know if this will be on Shonen Jump because it's a, although it's owned by like Shonen Jump's parent company, which is Viz, it's under a different like imprint. It's under the SIG imprint, which I think is for slightly older teens yeah so I don't know if it would be on Shonen Jump so 
I'll see about if not ebooks. But yeah, I'll see once I get to like that end if I'm like, yeah, I want to own this series or not. Because that's kind of once I'm further into a series, I can usually tell how I feel about them. But like at the beginning, I'm never as sure as much, especially depending on the length of the series. But because there's only 14 volumes, I potentially would buy them as well. And then I have Vagabond. This is again another omnibus. This is omnibus one. I do own the second omnibus in this series and I will be reading it and potentially carrying on with buying them after that. I really enjoyed this. I will say that the story was okay. I thought the story was okay, but I thought the art was fantastic. And so for me uh, at the moment, just where it is like the story at the moment, the art is a bigger draw than the story itself. The story is quite average in terms of it's about a samurai. It's about his journey. He's really, obviously he's really good, um, but he's a bit of an outcast. And it's kind of, I guess, him now going to be building himself up to becoming maybe Japan's best samurai or something. I'm interested to see where the story goes, but I don't think the story at the moment is anything fantastic but I think the art style is fantastic. So that is the draw for me, and especially for owning the series is where I can actually physically look at the art. In this print especially, they are on lovely white paper, so it like really makes the blackness of the art stand out. And I just think the art is stunning. I have the second volume, I'll be reading that, and then trying to buy them. I don't know if any of them are out of print. It's been an, it's an older series, but it is a popular enough series that it's been around for a while. So I don't know if like the prints, still in print, it's out of print, we'll see how much they are, but yeah. I will read the second volume and then probably try and buy the rest of the series. So our third category is ones that I don't own anything more of the series. So starting up, we have Blue Exorcist Volume 1. I really enjoyed this. This was good fun. It is about our main character, Rin, who finds out he is the son of Satan. And then him kind of choosing to become an exorcist and hell catch and maybe kill, I can't remember if they kill, demons, uh, instead of like going down, I guess, his demon father's wants or roots. Um, this was good fun. Like I said, I don't own the second volume of this, and I probably am going to go the Shonen Jump route again, See, read this on there, see how much I like it, and then in the future, if I want to buy the volumes, buy the volumes, but for now, keep this volume for now, but I definitely will continue on the series, but I probably will do it through the app. Um, a volume that is in a serial, similar vein, and that is Boruto. This is volume one. I liked this. Um, it still, at the moment, feels like it's finding its footing. I don't know if it came out, it was just trying to kind of carry on with the Naruto vibes, and so I'm kind of in interested to see if it kind of develops its own storytelling. It has a lot of stuff at the moment that is very Naruto-esque, which makes sense, but I would like to kind of get this author's own take on it, especially because our main focus is Boruto, so he's a character that didn't really exist in the Naruto series, I think except for like the last volume or the last chapter. So it'd be nice to see this author's take on that character. I'm not in that much of a huge care at the moment to own these series, this volumes, so I will continue on with the series via Shonen Jump. I don't know how much of a, at the moment, of a priority that's going to be. I did really like the Naruto series, I own all of the Naruto volumes, so you know, I do like the series, but so far this is just okay. So we will see how it develops though, because like this is only the first volume and I think there's I think there's a lot at the moment. I'm not sure how many, but I think it's definitely in the double digits. So yeah, I will go on to reading this on Shonen Jump at some point in the future. Then I have Your Lie in April. This was a really fun series. This is a slice of life teen drama series. It's about a musician who has kind of lost his ability to hear music and then him and a group of friends. And I guess along the way, he's going to learn that and there's going to be, you know, friendships and helping each other out and stuff. It was really fun. It was light hide. And I will be continuing on with this series. I think this has 11 or 12 volumes, but I think the first 10 of them or nine, uh, I can't remember, but they're available on Kindle Unlimited. So I'm going to finish this volume series on Kindle Unlimited. I will probably then just buy the eBooks of the other few. And I might get rid of this volume. I'm not sure if I care about owning it. Like it was nice and fun, but we'll see. I'll probably hold on to it until I've read more of the series and then we'll make up my mind because I could just always buy it on Kindle or something to be able to read it. This was a nice volume and I did enjoy it and the introduction to this series. So yeah, I will be continuing on with this as well. I then have My Brother's Husband. Now this I think is actually a bind up of two volumes and I think there's only another one of this like volume and I will be buying it. So it's easy. It's one volume and I did like this. This is the story of a uh, Japanese man who meets his dead twin brother's husband for the first time. He, I don't think, was very accepting of his brother's homosexuality and his brother had left Japan and gone to Canada and married this guy and so they'd been estranged for a while and so this guy has now come to Japan to kind of see his husband's birth village and learn about the like environment and stuff and like meet his niece and it's quite wholesome, especially the interactions be between like the husband and his niece, I think it's quite sweet, but it's also kind of her finding out about homophobia for the first time. She's kind of being like bragging that she has this foreign uncle and now some of her friends don't want, aren't allowed around her house because, you know, she, she has this uncle who only is from her other uncle and yeah people aren't accepting about it so it's interesting to see it from that take to kind of see this the way that kind of J Japan is about it because it's not in a very hostile way but it's still in a quite an isolating way and yeah even our main character um he him dealing with his own internalized homophobia that he had towards his brother and how he views this now guy living in his house and um, so yeah it was a really interesting story I liked it so I will be picking up the second volume of this to finish the series then I have my love mix up um I really liked this this was so much fun this was really cute I will be carrying on with the series and I'm 
I'm probably going to buy them as well. I don't think it's too long. I think it's like, I think it's finished and I think it's nine or ten volumes. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was cute. It was funny. It was quite sweet. And it was just quite lighthearted, which sometimes is what I need in a romance manga. I don't want drama sometimes. Sometimes I just want like cute and fluff. And so this for me, I feel like it's going to be that for a series. So I'm definitely going to carry on with it. And yeah, I'm going to probably buy the volumes as well. Uh, then I have Yoramushi Pedal. I really enjoyed this series, uh, this volume. It was funny. It was quick. It was, it's a sports series, one of my loves. And so I really, really enjoyed it. I didn't love the art style in it for our characters, the environments and everything like that was lovely. The characters were okay. Sometimes they were a bit like fishbowly, where their faces were quite like, just not my preferred art style. But like, because this, the actual story in it was really good, I, you know, I can look at, I can get used to a style like that. So I can like, for me, it's, the manga is about, manga in general is about story over style, but this was just a fun story. So the art style, it balances out. I do want to carry on with the series. I have no idea how I'm going to carry on with it because the volumes are really expensive, like £16 a volume. Ebooks are about £11 a volume and I don't know if there's anywhere online that I can read it if this is from Yen Press. I don't know if they have any kind of like online service or anything. So yeah, I do want to carry, carry on with it and I do like to try and carry on with manga like legally and not just finding it online. And so we shall see. This will be one I will be looking for in the future. If I can find the volumes secondhand somewhere, that would be fantastic. But yeah, I would love to carry on with this series because this was just a really fun time. So yeah, uh, for the last one for this little group, uh, and that is Inuyasha. This is volume one. Again, this is the Omnibus. So this is the first three volumes. And I really had fun with this. This is my first time experiencing this series. I never watched the anime and I loved it. It's kind of just really gives me like classic uh, manga, the fantasy vibes. You can kind of see from this, I think a lot of what became tropes that are, you can see later series is in a uh, manga and I yeah I really enjoyed it I will be carrying on with this series I don't own anymore but I will be buying them and I will be buying the Viz Big Editions if I can I think I should be able to I have a I've kind of searched up at least the next few and I've been able to find them for decent prices I think there's maybe 18 or 19 of these volumes so you know there's going to be quite a lot and it will probably take me a while to collect them all but I have yeah just had such a good fun time, fun time reading this so yeah I definitely want to carry on with the series carry on in this format again because it has the big nice white printing of the series you know, it just looks quite stunning. And the story was just fun and yeah, fast paced and entertaining. So I will definitely be carrying on with this series. And then I have my last little stack, which is the smallest stack. The first one is Holic. I read the first volume of this. I do have the second volume of this, which I'm going to at least attempt to read, but I probably am not going to carry on with the series. This is by Clamp, so the same author that did um, Chibits. And I just don't think I care about their story, the way they write stories as much. I just don't think it's for me. It's just, it was fine. This has also, I think, at particular, this series feels like it has a bit of a tie in into the kind of like Clamp universe. At the end of this volume, a character comes in who is in the series Subasa, Subasa Reservoir Chronicles which I have read a good portion of that and then ends up stopped reading because I just don't, it just doesn't hold my interest for long enough. I'm going to at least read the second volume I have of this but I'm probably not going to carry on with it and I probably will unhaul these at some point in the future. And then I have Cutie and the Beast. I'm undecided on this one. I thought that some elements of this story was quite cute, quite sweet but there was like an 11, was it 9 or 11? There was, I can't remember if it's a 9 or 11 year age gap. Our main girl is 18 and he is in his late 20s which is gross for me. And also she is a fan of his. He's a professional wrestler. She's a fan of his. That whole thing feels like it's a bit of a weird relationship dynamic. And yeah, when I just re-say it to myself, I just don't think I want to carry on with it. There's elements to this I think are cute. I love a series with a, like a buff guy, not like a pretty prince guy, but more of like a, like a burly bigger guy. And I want to read more of, I'd love to read more of that in anime, uh, in manga. But yeah, not this one, not with this age difference, not with this power dynamic in the relationship, D uncomfy for me. And it's it's brought up as well. It's like, there's an element of the story where they talk about it. I think it ends, the the volume ends where he, she meet like her, her dad and mum are about to confront him. And you know, you're like, I don't need the drama, no. 11 years or eight, nine, it doesn't matter, an 18 year old and he's either 29. I think he is 29. I don't think he's 27, I think he's 29. So I think it's 11 years. No, there's no reason for you two to be messing around with each other. If he, if she was 28 and he was 39, fine, but not, not, not she's 18, she's still in high school. Like, no. So I think I'm probably not gonna carry on with this series and probably will at some point unhaul the volume. I think there's only four volumes of this series though. So I am like, hmm, there's only four volumes. So at least you could see what happens. So then I'm like, again, I question myself, maybe I will. But I think there's other romance series that I'd enjoy more, so I probably will not. And then I have my special one, again, volume one. Um, hmm, I just don't think I'm gonna bother with this one. It started off in an interesting way in that our main character, she was like resilient to love. And she was like, she hated love and she really hated like 
pretty boys because she once got kind of humiliated by like a really pretty boy when she confessed to him and this guy who is basically a j-pop star and he seems quite sweet and kind of like silly and stuff and so i was like enjoying that dynamic but then she falls in love with him very very quickly and it changes and then she kind of becomes a not pathetic but like a bit like basically like the sort of girl that she hated at the beginning and it just didn't feel then it felt just very then generic and kind of he then also is not interested in romance because of course he isn't so it's gonna be what volumes of her pining for him or he's being a bit more stoic and yeah i just don't think i'm interested i want something a bit more like a bit more interesting from a romance really like like my love mix up i thought had like was just funny and it was different and it was like kind of threw some curveballs in there but it was in like a kind of sweet non-serious way whereas yeah this i just wasn't that interested so i'm probably not going to carry on with the series and again at some point i will unhaul this and then the last volume for my 25 uh, is steins gate volume one this is a sci-fi series kind of a, to do with like time machines and time travel and i just don't think i cared it was like a fine volume and it was interesting enough but i don't know how much i care about time travel and i also do know this has a really popular anime so i think i'd rather just watch the anime i think yeah i think i'd just have more fun like that there was a lot of stuff happening that i didn't understand 100 percent, but also i just don't think i cared like it just wasn't interesting enough for me to be like oh i'm really interested to see how this story ends i'm kind of just like it was fine i don't care how it ends so i probably am not going to cont continue on with this and again at some point i will get rid of this volume so that was everything that i thought about actually in total i don't think i did too bad so there were four definite kind of no's for me out of 20 out of 20 new series so that's not bad you know i'm will be buying some series, but then some series, I'm glad that I started them to kind of, one, read the volumes that I have of them, but also to kind of test the waters with what I then am going to be using Shonen Jump for, because Shonen Jump does have a bunch of series that I'm really interested in, but I didn't want to go in like with no idea what I wanted to read at all and be like overwhelmed. So I have like D. Grey Man, Blue Exorcist, Boruto, I'll definitely be reading on there. And so we, that will be from my testing the waters out, seeing how the app is and seeing how much use I get out of it. So that was the end of this video. I apologize that this kind of my wrap up for this came so late i'm filming this in january so like so late because i just kind of i did make one short and then like hated it so i was like i don't want to do that i don't want to do that so yeah so that was that was all that was my little wrap up for those 25 volumes of manga that i read in november now which is like almost three months away thank you guys so much for watching this video i will see you again hopefully soon bye